What's up, y'all? How y'all doing today? This is just a random live. It's snowing outside, stuck in the house, which is perfectly fine with me. Let's add some people in here. Hey, how y'all doing? This is kind of a random live. It's snowing outside, y'all. Are y'all being safe? Y'all staying in? Y'all outside? What y'all doing? Hey, Chill City. Okay, I'm kind of excited for this conversation. Majestic in the building. Once y'all get in here, make sure you share the live with as many people as you can, okay? Let's get this conversation started. Hold on, let me just share it a little bit. If you are an artist, this is this conversation will be for you. Just something on my mind that I want to talk about. Hey, Jada. How y'all feeling? What's up, y'all? Okay, so yes, this conversation is strictly for artists. Um... I don't know. I just want to see what's on your what's on your mind when it comes to um, just being heard. Like, do you feel like you you're heard as an artist? Um, do you feel like you have the right people around you when it comes to being heard? When it comes to um, being connected with the older generation. Do you feel connected when it comes to that? I want y'all to talk to me tonight. Um, any questions that you have, you can put them in the question box at the bottom of your screen. Um, and all this is coming from a release party that I went to recently on February 13th. Shout out to DJ your boy boy for putting that together. Um, I was a part of his mixtape called Organic Chemistry. Um, that's um, the link to that is in our bio. So so if you want to listen to that, it's there for you to listen to. It's a bunch of amazing artists on there. Um, but just doing that, just being there, it made me feel comfortable. Just being in a in a room full of creatives. Um, who loved what they do just as much as I love what I do. And, you know, I've been working with working on Sound on the Hill for about three years, a little over three years. And um, I've, I've had my challenges. I've had my challenges, you know. And um, sometimes, well, me, I know I was always a person who didn't really talk to people out loud like I'm always to myself most of the time being an, an observer most of the time and um you know when you're building a brand sometimes you have to put yourself out there and actually talk to people and get to know them have them get to know you and that's not always an easy thing um especially if you're not used to it especially if this is something new for you um and that's what we kind of want to talk about today Hey, how y'all doing? I see y'all coming in. Um, but being at that release party gave me the idea, um, you know, to put a panel together with the old generation and the new generation to bridge a gap between us. Because I feel like there's a little disconnect when it comes to the old generation and the new generation understanding each other. So yeah, that's something that we are working on right now, putting together. We're looking at April. 
we're looking at April for the date, um, April of the 11th. I think that's what we're going for. Tyree said there's a big old gap. Okay, so Tyree, tell me if you don't mind, uh, you think you could come in here, tell me how do, how do you feel about the gap? What do you think the artist need needs from the old generation? What do you feel like the old generation needs from the new? What's up, y'all? I see y'all coming in. Because there's definitely a bridge. I don't, and I feel like it's, it's misunderstood most of the time when it comes to the old generation and the new generation because you know, most of the old generation feels like there's there's certain steps that you have to take when it comes to, you know, business. Yeah, DJ CO says he's listening. Jada says support. So Jada, do you feel like you don't get enough support from the old generation? Is that how you feel? And we got people on here listening, you guys, that want to hear from you before we even put the panel together. Because we really just want to understand what you guys need. Just like DJ CEO says, support how? Tari says, I believe that we could all win if there was more support and leadership. He needs uh, specifics. If you want to get on here with me, just send me a request and I'll add you. Chill City said, business mindset is definitely key. There are more, they're more than just the music side. It's more than just the music side, especially if you're coining yourself as an independent artist. That's true. Yeah, just send me a request and I'll add whoever wants to talk. This, this live is strictly for you guys. Okay. Now, I did write down some topics because I have talked to a few of you um, individually. And so the topics I have written down that I feel are important, um, that other artists feel like are important. Wait, Jared said, me and Kelvin definitely talked about this in our interview. Yes, y'all did talk about this. I definitely remember. But yeah, the topics I have are... Com one, communication with people in your reach. I feel like it's a disconnect there. I can go deeper, but not trying to type paragraphs. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to be open to the next generation because the sound isn't what you're used to. So... Do you feel like, so um, most of the disconnect comes from the sounds being different? Mm -mm. Yeah, while you guys type, because I know y'all got a lot to say, um, I'm going to go ahead and read the topics. So one, communication with people in your reach. Two, intimidation. Because I feel like it's a lot of intimidation when it comes to new artists um, trying to get the trying to get to know the older artists. Um, competition. There's a lot of competition going on when we when we really need to work together. Four networking. Networking is really important, especially if you're an artist. Um, you can't be afraid. You can't be afraid to get to know the people around you. But you also have to feel comfortable in doing so. Um, the next one is unity. We need to come together, y'all. That's my take on it. Um, the next one is out of city and state acceptance. Because, you know, I know we're from Huntsville. Well, I, I know we're in Huntsville. Um, but there's a lot of people here that aren't from here. And you know, not e well, not even with Huntsville, even if you're in a city that's not yours, 
sometimes a new artist can feel intimidated just by being in a new city because they feel like, you know, they don't know anybody. They don't know if the people there are going to be accepting to their artistry just because they're not from there. That's a topic we need to talk about. Um, personal experience. I want to hear the I want to hear personal experiences from you guys. What have you gone through when it comes to these situations? And like me and Chill City talked about um, reputation. Reputation is very important when it comes to being an artist. And um, that's why I want to know, do you guys feel like you're known as an artist? Like, do people really know you? Or do they judge you off of your social media? Tyree said, I agree, but there's a lot of talent going unnoticed and I... And I ain't even speaking on myself, but I'm working for those who are next up, need that network. I work outside of Huntsville, many connects. It's something about Huntsville that's not on point, but it could be, but it could be if the leaders were more accepting to those who are not as business savvy, lead, lead them to the water. Let's see. Dang, Tyree, I wish you can get on here and talk to me. Now, I have talked to a few younger artists, and a lot of them feel like some of the old generation isn't that accepting because they don't know the business side of things. But, hey, Aria, hold on. Okay, he sent the request. Hold on, here we go. Waiting for it to connect. We in there. Hey, what's up? What's up? Okay, let's Shout talk. Shout out to the Hill family. What's good? Okay, so I see you said it could be if the leaders were more accepting to those who are not as business savvy. Can you elaborate on that? Um, as far as the, if you have a studio, if you have, you know, the, the power to create the sound that's better, um, you know, like that's what uh, I get a lot on my music personally about, mm -hmm. oh, your quality could be better and all that. And, um, uh, I mean, I understand that. And, um, but it's like, when I've I've talked to some studio heads and it's like it's always a condescending type of manner. So it's like I'ma just keep working by myself and you know, so that's one thing of many things that we should address. Like it's I could drop the best album of the year, you know what I'm saying? But it's, it's like when do without, you feel like do you hmm. feel like it's a personal thing or do you feel like it's just their natural nature? to be business savvy yeah, I, I, I personally i don't take anything personal because i mean in the in this music game it's it's all a business but it is um <laughs> many album. factors that can be i lost I'm my listening. train of thought but it's um uh, it's many factors that goes into music that um mm -hmm. i mean you can't do it by yourself Nobody can do it by their so And uh, I mean, okay, I so, to be a studio head. So that's what I'm working on. So how do you feel like the old generation can support the new generation? Um, just what, what are I the said before, leadership and mentorship. If something isn't right, let someone know. And uh, I mean, it's a lot of ignoring going on. Just you know, like you you know you saw that message. Like let's just be honest. Like that that type of vibe, it's 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 everywhere in the city right now, and it's not appreciated. But um, it we can we can make it. I believe in us. I believe in trust. But yeah, that's it's a big thing. And even artists that you may be of the younger generation, but you're not giving the keys out. Like, that's my main thing. I give the keys to those who do not understand this business. Like, create your BMI, you know, 
Um, make sure your business is established. You have a plan, a goal in mind, your why, and how how you're gonna do it. So uh, that's one thing: mentorship, mentorship, leadership. DJ CL says, "Have you many open mics? Have you ever been to any open mics in the city?" I've been to many open mics. What's up, Enrique? I see you. In Atlanta. In Atlanta. But uh, Huntsville. I've been trying. I've been looking for open mics. There's not a lot of them. I've seen some lately, but I've been busy. But it's some that's been popping out lately. I'm going to let you know, DJ CO. I'm going to let you know when I'm pulling up. Yes, sir. Okay, so when it comes to mentorship, um... Do you feel like the new, the new generation, is that something that we ask for? Or is that something that we expect for the older generation to provide for us without us asking? It shouldn't be accepted. It shouldn't be expected. It should be something that you, if you're seeking that, why shouldn't you re be able to find that? Mentorship, that's something that I do personally. Like, if someone asks for my help, then, and I'm not even, you know, I'm a young OG, but mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I don't have my own studio. I record mm -hmm. out the house, like, and pretty good quality. But um, it's just, yeah, those those types of things, the ignoring when someone's asking for help, and there's some great talent, so much great talent, and I'm like, why aren't you? That's what that's what my issue with the Huntsville dynamic music scene. Do you feel like we the ignoring? Win. Do you feel like the ignoring comes from being disappointed a certain amount of times, or do you feel like it's just a certain amount of cockiness? Or I wouldn't even say it's cockiness, like? or you know, I I would say it's busy schedules happen. Like, you know, right. busy schedule. Yeah, we're all busy. busy. Yeah, so, like, you can't chalk it up to that. But personally, I've sent many messages to some people that I want to work with. Like, multiple mm -hmm. messages. One or two. Three, mm -hmm. sometimes. And so, it's, it's kind of like, you know, I know you I know You, you know you've <laughs> seen the message now. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like that. It's like that. So, then it becomes, I don't take things personal, but I understand that most would and I'm not gonna hit you up more than three times like if I'm trying to work you know that's what it just come down to all right three messages you don't want to work with me that's cool I'm gonna just keep doing what I'm doing keep on ch checking keep going forward what's up guys what's up guys if you're just coming in um right now we're talking about bridging the gap between the old generation and the new generation um we just want to we want to see what you guys need as far as artists. What do you expect when it comes to connecting with people that are older than you that are, you know, that know more than you when it comes to the industry, um when it comes to just art in general. So if you have Shout out AJC in here. Yeah, shout out to him. Talk, um he's definitely a part of the, the podcast. Doc. He's definitely a part of the panel. Um and you know with a bunch of other people who are really down to you know get to understand you guys as artists because you know we talk we talk about the business part of artistry a lot but first we have to get to know each other as much as we can we have to build that trust when it comes to artistry when it comes to knowing you know what type of artist you are and why you make the music you make and things like that that's exactly. very important you're right Okay, I see Kelvin say, Kelvin, do you still, wait, he says, it's much deeper than that, though, but my guy Tyree is on the right track. It's always much deeper, my brother, but yeah, I mean. Okay, well, let's, let's give Kelvin a shot to talk, and Tyree, if we have to, if we bring you back, we can bring you back. Um, I'll be in here, <laughs> DJ CEO, I'll definitely check that out, like. I'm working on the hottest R&B mixtape of 2021, so whoever's trying to help out, you know, it's going to be hot. It's going to be hot. With or without anybody, I'm going to do my thing. But, yeah. All right. Shout out <laughs> to you, CC. Appreciate it. 
Oh, uh, thank you, thank you. Peace. Mellows, Mellows and Flow said, I think the problem with the new school is that everybody wants to be rich, but they, but they don't know how to do business. Okay. So I'm saying that it's, it's looking like the older generation DJ C said, I want to hear it. I want to play the music. So the older generation kind of wants you guys to be more business savvy. That's what it's looking like. And the newer generation kind of wants you guys to understand them outside of business before. Hold on, let me see. Okay, we're adding Kelvin. What's up, Greg? I see you. Hey. Hey, what's good? What's good? Am I, am I coming in clear? Yeah, I see you. All right, bet, bet. What's going on? How you feeling? I'm feeling good. It's snowing outside. I'm stuck in <laughs> and I'm good. <laughs> right, right. Hey, it's a cold week. It's a cold week for sure. Mellows and oh, Flow says, it's all about check me out this and this and that, but nobody really showing love. Yeah, it's 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 a deep issue, man. It's, it really is. And me, um, I think I'm speaking from exactly a place from uh, the, which uh, a lot of other artists feel, especially when you're not from here. I'm not from here. Okay. Like, I'm, orig I'm originally from Georgia. Uh, I graduated high school down in Prattville, and mm -hmm. I lived in Florence for about six years prior to being in Huntsville. I've been in Huntsville for about four years now. Okay. So um, now, with that said, I've seen a lot of love and I've seen a lot of negativity. So now I can understand both sides of the argument. I'm 33. So okay. I kind of, I kind of consider myself between, you yeah, know, you the the age the middle. right. So, you know, I'm, I'm old enough to remember a lot of the old stuff and, you know, I'm young enough to still get down with what's going on right now. So, um, Tyree was in, headed in the right direction. Sometimes you do try to hit people up. You try to collaborate. You try to network. And sometimes people just, they're either they're not feeling it or people don't know how to address that they're not feeling it in the right way. So then you end up getting ghosted, you know, by other artists or be it influencers or DJs. Uh, shout out CEO. Um, you know, and I, I've met him. He's a good guy. You know, mm -hmm. Tyree, that's my guy. You know, I've worked with Tyree in the studio. Very, very talented young brother. Um, you know, like I said, I, I understand both sides. But the one thing, the one thing the artists have to understand in this era right now that we're in when it comes to music and the streaming era, okay? okay. We're in the era of social proof, okay? Mm -hmm. So which means that if you're not popping to some degree on your own, a lot of these people are not going to mess with you. And that's not to be negative. That's just how it is now. You know, now we can remember back, you know, the Lil Wayne mixtape era where all you needed was that one mixtape and then labels is coming to find you. That's not. Greg said love don't be genuine. They right. don't love you until you already established. Exactly. And that's my whole point. That's my whole point. People are more liable to follow somebody that's already popping than somebody that's not popping. So if your IG got, what, a thousand followers and then my man over here got 10K, they're going to follow my man that got 10K before they follow the dude with a thousand. That so just, do you do you feel like the older generation pays attention to that? Or yeah. is that just a new generation thing? No, no. I think the older generation follows, uh, you know, kind of plays into it as well because, you know, if they have any type of stake, you know, or any type of actual power, that's what they're looking for. They're looking okay. for artists that's doing, you know, that, that understands the business, right? Mm -hmm. Understands the three types of streaming uh, royalties, okay? Which we talk about music. We're talking about streaming royalties. You got your mm -hmm. performer arts. You got your publishing. And you got your mechanical from the actual stream. I broke that down on the interview before. Um, now, they're also going to look at your social media presence, your social proof. They want to see, are you putting out content? Are you engaging with your fans daily? Are you commenting? Are you sharing? Are people saving your 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 post? That's what they're looking for. 
And you know what? That kind of goes into what me and Chill City were talking about the other day on his live um, when it comes to reputation. Like a right. lot of people go to your page just to see how much do you love yourself? How much work do you put into your own artistry when it comes to you? Because if you're not posting, if you're not promoting for yourself, then how do you expect somebody else to promote for you? Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, and I, and I get it. A lot of us are working day jobs, too. Mm -hmm. A lot of us is grinding, putting in that hard work, you know, and, you know, sometimes it feels like, you know, nobody's noticing it. But mm -hmm. at the same time, you know, you have to invest in yourself and you have to double down on yourself. You know, going through 2020, I came into a small bag. I was able to reinvest in myself and mm -hmm. that got me leagues ahead of where I was, you know, and that's that's from running targeted ads, getting to the fans to actually want to listen to my music. Mm -hmm. That's working with curators, finding curators on Spotify playlists, Apple Music playlists, you know, people that's actually going to play your music, you know, and then it's also create my own brand. So, you know, and, and doing doing my own merch and building my own website. So, yeah. you know, these are the types of things that anybody that's going to provide services to you, this is what they want to see. Now, if we're talking about guys like my man CEO, he's an approachable guy. And I'm sure if you approach him the right way, he's going to be willing to help you, more than willing to help you. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, when I met him for the first time, it was all love. So, you know, I got nothing, no no ill will or nothing like that. But I think a lot of times what happens is we work so hard, we get in our creative space, and then we want to get in the inbox or the DMs and be like, hey, yo, help me with such and such and such and such. And then the way you present it may not be the right way at the right time. Because... And I, I'm more of a face-to-face -face guy anyway. And I know COVID mm -hmm. makes that hard. But when you approach somebody the right way, especially face-to-face, -face, like, here, look, this is what I'm working on. This is what I got. Do you have anything to add? You got any advice? You know, hey, can you spend my song? You know, mm -hmm. you just have to do it the right way. And I understand a lot of people don't like the clout chase in this era. But this is the era of clout chasers. This is the era of meme pages. DJ CO said, I, I just want to play what's dope. Chill City said, that's understanding right. the business aspect of it. Yes, sir. Um, Black Women Diaries, what's up? I'm going to save this live. Greg said, it's cool to hate on people these days for some reason. Yeah, well, you know, the thing is, is that, you know, like I said, I mean, being in this digital era and the era of social media, everybody's going to have an opinion. You know, I'm pretty sure LeBron gets 2 million hate comments a day, you know. And so on a smaller scale, we're going to catch it too. Nobody is safe. Nobody is safe. You're going to catch the hate. Now, look, DJ CO saying he want to play what's dope. Now, if I send DJ CO my song and he ain't feeling it, ain't nothing I can do about it. That's you know, and, and my thing is this. I'm a guy of total honesty. If I'm with you and we in a stool or whatever, and I'm, you know, and I'm saying, hey, you go check my song out. If you ain't feeling it, you ain't feeling it. And that's fine. You know, my guy Profe, uh, and my guy Aaron, you know, we we the three amigos. You know, we we basically kind of compete with each other and um try to impress each other. And so I tell them straight, hey, tell me if it's whack. Tell me if it's whack. You know, you, you have to get comfortable with that. You gotta get comfortable with taking that constructive criticism. Sometimes somebody's gonna think your record is whack. And I got no problem with that. I've had people send me hate comments before and comment on my ads. I don't get mad at that. When people comment on my ads with hate comments, I say, thank you. That's more engagement for me. You don't realize you helping yeah. me. Because there's almost, and that, that, that's why people, that's why I can't really get mad when people do things for clout, because that's how you get your clicks. And that, that's just what the game is right now, like it or not. So when somebody's acting like a buffoon on social media and they getting the clicks, that means there's no such thing as negative press. So you have to figure out what works for you. Now, if you don't want to be the buffoon and you don't want to act a fool on social media, you don't got to do that. You don't got to do that. So you just have to figure out what works for you, how to engage with your fans, find your fans. All you got to do is find a thousand true fans. You find a thousand true fans, you can eat off that. And everybody can eat now. That's the beauty of the streaming era. So that's just my, my take on it. So, okay, oh, yeah, yeah. CEO, I see you. Yeah, we, we, I'm going to send it to you, bro. I'm going to send it to you. I think a lot of artists are just 
in the words of Erica Badu, sensitive about their shit. Like, right. I just feel like a lot of people, everybody doesn't know how to take constructive criticism, but it's definitely something you need, especially if you're right. trying to be an artist, especially if you're trying to be in this industry, because everybody's not going to right give you that cupcake tone like everybody isn't like that and exactly i got stuff in my cart too we still gotta drop better <laughs> <laughs> hey we do hey tyree we're gonna, we gonna work bro i promise you we're we gonna drop some stuff i gotta work with you homie so tell me when it comes to because you did say you're not from here uh can you elaborate more on your personal experience oh uh, yeah to old new generation type of feel and being supported um well my personal experience in huntsville has kind of been mixed but it's been really really positive because okay. when i first came to huntsville and this is not you know this i'm not capping or nothing like that like i was just really really surprised at the level of talent that is here and yeah a lot the, of yeah, and then and then the ability of so many people to put these events together and it's black and it's beautiful and you know everybody's chilling, you know, it ain't no nonsense going on. And so I was really, really impressed, and I still am, because mm -hmm. people find a way to put things together to create these opportunities for people. So the opportunities are there, but mm -hmm. you have to figure out how to work within that network. And it takes talking to people. And that's why I say it's all in your approach. Now, when it comes from the older generation to the new, like I said, I'm kind of in that in-between spot, so I really mm -hmm. don't feel too much of it. And that's why I think I can understand, because I understand being sensitive about your art. I do. And a lot of younger artists are going to be that way just because it is what it is. When you're an artist, you're going to be sensitive. That's how you write what you write. Right. That's how, that's how you create what you create. You know, a lot, yeah. of times, a lot of times it takes me being in my feelings to write the dope stuff I write. It just, it is what it is. Like, if, if I don't get into that mode, I can't write it the right way. And, you know, and I'm unapologetic when I do it. So it's just one of those things. But like I said, I, I don't feel like there's too much of a disconnect from the old to the new. I think the disconnect is in the business practices to bridge the gap. Because your business practices have to be correct. If you're trying to build a brand, Okay, and you're trying to take music seriously as a business, mm -hmm. you have to learn how to approach people the right way. Like I said, CO is telling y'all submit your music right now. He's yeah. sitting here right here telling y'all to submit it. So that that means he's open to listening to it and checking it out and giving you feedback. So there's people out here who are willing to do that for you. You have to just find the right way to do it because, like I said, we, we way past the days of being J. Cole in New York and having our mixtape <laughs> to Jay-Z. Like, we way past that, bro. That's not going to happen. That, that's just not going to happen for you. If you think somebody's going to hear your song one time and put you on, you, you're dreaming. You're absolutely dreaming. This is the time where you can build your own brand and not just build your own brand, but own your own masters. Okay. Yeah. It's all about screwing over labels now. Nobody should be looking for a label. Nobody should be looking for a handout. You can own your own masters, distribute your own music, and reap all the benefits from it, okay? Even if you're just doing a 1,000 streams a month or less, that's still money that's going straight in your pocket, feeding your kids, you know, rather than some other type of person owning it yeah. and sending their kids to college, you know, doing all kinds of craziness. So that's the type of stuff you got to think about. You got to get in that business mindset because trust me, I understand the art side is fine. Yeah. The recording process is fine. That's all cool. But once you get past the recording process and you start thinking, okay, how do I market myself? Okay. How do I start connecting with fans? How do I find new fans? How do I use Facebook, Instagram? TikTok, Snapchat, how do I use these platforms to my benefit? And if there's one platform that you're good at, stick with that one platform. You ain't got to spread yourself thin. Like me, I like IG. I yeah, learned too. IG pretty well. I like doing that. There's a website called Zire. That's Z-I-R-E. Zire.com. That's one of the ones I use to put targeted ads out. And it sends it to 
a whole gang of websites. It does your social media uh, ads for you, so you don't have to go straight through Facebook and Instagram. It does everything for you and creates the ads for you to get you clicks. And it targets hip-hop fans in different areas in the country. So there's plenty of things. And they ain't paying me to say that. I wish they was. <laughs> <laughs> okay? But that's one of the ones that I use to connect. So there's things out there. And and you don't and and you don't have to get fake streams and nothing like that. You could talk to curators directly. Most of these curators have Facebook, so they have contact info to submit your music. Okay, because trust me, I don't like spending money on marketing, but marketing is the most important part. Oh, repeat the name. Look, I'm, I'm gonna type it down here for y'all. Zire on. is um Z I R E, right? Yeah, Zire. Oh shoot, Zire.com. I'm trying to type it down here. Yeah, I can type it. Right. Yeah, there you go. But yeah, Zyre, check them out, man. It's very, very easy. It's a one-stop shop for targeted ads. You can set your budget to whatever you want to sell, whatever money you're working with, and you can do it for like a week or a month or whatever. So that's one of the things you want to look at. And there's a bunch of other websites to do the same exact thing to get your targeted uh, ads out there. And you can also download the uh, Facebook ad hub. I, I can't remember exactly what the name of it is. It's another app that you can download. And, it's, and it shows you all the ads from every company that's running ads. Okay? That's Nike. That's the NFL. That's everybody. Everybody that's running ads. You can see what they're running. It tells you. So you got to understand analytics. That's a big part of marketing. But, you, but you, just like you put that hard work in the studio, you can't skip on the marketing side. You yeah, cannot you definitely, do it. That's definitely something that you have to study. And that's also a reason why we want to put this panel together as well, because we want right. to connect the artists that are here with each other so they'll be able right. to have these conversations, you know, and it won't seem intimidating because, you know, it's we're a room full of artists, you know? Exactly. 100%. And, and anybody that's worked with me, I know Tyree has, and a few others, uh, the neighbors, um, you know, those are some of the guys that's worked with us. And, you know, me and Profe, we typically work together. Sometimes we work separate. We both have home studios, mm -hmm. as you can see. But um, we're very, very chill. We're very chill guys. We're not going to judge you. You know, we like different types of music. I like everything from Pusha T to Taylor Swift. So, it, <laughs> you know, it, it, it don't matter to me what you, whatever you want to do. Like, if yeah. you want to come work with me or Profe, come holler at us. Send us a DM. We'll be happy. We'll record you. You know, if you need help with writing, we'll help you write it. You know, we're not perfect, but we'll help you do whatever you need to do to get that certain level of quality that you want to reach. We know engineers, you know, so we have a few connections. That's how we get the level of quality that we have in our music. That's what we chase is a high level of quality and, uh, and great mixing and mastering. So, but like I said, we're willing to help people for the free, for the free. So this is not me trying to, you know, See, get no money this? out of this or nothing like that. This is somebody trying to help for the free, y'all. Yeah, this is free, free game right here. For the free. Like I said, we, you know, me and Profe work all the time. You know, we're constantly writing, constantly recording. You know, like I said, we probably got songs we could give you. <laughs> just keeping it 100. So we're always looking for artists to work with. You know, just come holler at us, man. We got to link up for sure. Hey, I see you, CEO. Yeah, most definitely. <laughs> Most definitely, we gotta link up for sure. And 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 let me say this too, while I'm still on here, is that I know even with me right now, I haven't done the best job of getting out and supporting everybody. I try to make it to these events. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. Like I said, COVID has made things very very difficult. But um, that's something I do strive to uh, get better in is making sure I make it to these events, making sure you know my face is being seen and I'm um, you know talking to y'all face to face and. And uh, just linking up and networking, man, because I know it's just it's been difficult and sometimes it's hard to do. But uh, getting out the house, that definitely helps, though, because sometimes you just have to get out and just like even if you're not performing at, a, at an event, you know, what I'm saying if, if you're just there showing love, you know, and that's something that we did heavy in 2019. Yeah, 2019, we did. that's something that we did. Me and Profe was damn near at almost every event. There's a few of them we didn't make, but we was at most of them just trying to show face and just show love because, like I said, I got a lot of love uh, for Tyree. Got a, love, a lot of love for the neighbors. I think the neighbors is, is really next up. I think they have that next level type of talent. And, um, you know, they, and, and like I said, they just nice guys, man. They, they, they good people. 
And there's other people out there as well, man. Uh, Sammy Cocos, um, you know, and, and some I'm, I'm forgetting some people right now, but there's a lot of talented people out there. There's more talented than I think more than myself. And, you know, even if you can't go out, because I know, you know, it is still a pandemic and things like that. So right. even if you can't go out, you can still show love on social media. You know, it only takes it only takes acknowledgement, like 30 seconds. That's it. Look, hey, that's that court. you know, that's all it takes is just acknowledgement. When you see your people yeah. or people you mess with doing something on social media, take that time out. Hit the like, you know, drop a comment down there. Right. You know, save the post, engage with it. And the new Instagram algorithm, just in case people didn't catch it or hear about it yet, the algorithm has changed for Instagram. Okay, it's not just likes and comments anymore. They're looking right. at posts, they're looking at post saves. Right. They're also looking into reels. So make sure you have your reels activated on your IG because they keep switching up that algorithm because you know like i said they don't want too much too many people getting clout but you have to kind of know how to trick the system so if you're trying to get followers or if you're trying to get more engagement and getting your post seen tell people to start saving your post okay be that, that's more what active be more active yeah, be more active um go on live yeah that's something live. that they look at too you know right. even even if it's just like once a week if you make right. it a consistent thing Right. then you'll you'll notice the engagement and things like that which is something that we're working on as well exactly exactly and, and i and i see that and i, I appreciate what y'all do because y'all really um like i said y'all really are trying to push the culture especially locally and y'all do give a lot of these artists a platform that wouldn't otherwise have it same thing with young business owners young black business owners um and it, it's beautiful y'all do beautiful work man and y'all always forever have my support 100 percent so thank you so that's much. That's just that's off top. But yeah, um something else I wanted to say. I can't remember what it was though. <laughs> okay, um I I do have a question for you. Um, because mm -hmm. I know the older gener generation wants specifics when it comes to what the artists want. So as an okay. artist, as an artist, what do you want? Um, when, I, when it comes to support, when it comes to acknowledgement, when it comes to, mm -hmm. you know, the business aspects of it, what exactly do you want as an artist? Well, I think the only thing that I would want as an artist is um, probably something like, you know, a round table or a panel. I think okay. that's the only thing that I would like just to get people in the room. And I think okay. as we're moving forward and we're getting past this COVID stuff, it's going to be more possible. Um, but I think having the right people in the room, answering the questions, and seeing what the needs are. But but with that said, the same artists who are asking for help have to show up. They got to be there. You got to show up. You and you know, show that, up. that's something that we talked about as well um, at this release party, you know, right. because... It was the 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 mixtape had like sixteen songs on it, and only three artists were there, including myself. Yeah. So it's like, if you want these people to accept you as artists, if you mm -hmm. want them to play your stuff continuously, if you right. want that support continuously, then you have to show up. You gotta yeah. show up. Yeah, you gotta show up. And yeah. that's the easiest part. That's not even right. the business part, you know. <laughs> yeah. You What's... just gotta be there. Exactly, and I totally understand. Because sometimes, like I said, when you work at that day job and you got to go to an event afterwards, I understand it's hard. I understand you tired. But that goes back to the mindset. Are you in it for the business? Is it a yeah. hobby or are you trying to get into the business? Because yeah. some people haven't decided that in their mind yet, whether it's just a hobby or you in it for the business. Because me, I'm in it for the business. I'm selling it's merch. I'm, you know, working with curators. I'm out here trying to build the brand. And that's know? not that's not knocking anybody that don't that doesn't know either. Right. right exactly. Now. Because sometimes it takes time to know if this is is this what I want to do? You know, right. is this just something right. that I love or is this right. something that I want to use as a career, you know? Exactly. And 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 I'm glad you brought that up. I'm glad you brought that up because I quit for a long time. I quit. I think it was like back in 2011, 2012. I quit until about 2018. Mm -hmm. And so 
because I didn't have a decided. And so going from 2018 to now, I've learned the most knowledge about the business that I've ever learned, you know, just and, and working with music. So it does take time. So my man got a question down here. Yeah, Jared says, how could artists better manage? Well, how can artists better manage when to be in the studio and when to network? Um, that's a good question. That's a good question. I think, honestly, you have to look at your catalog. That's where it starts. So if you're somebody that is constantly recording and you have a bunch of songs that you ain't dropped yet, get them out there. <laughs> get them the out there. The says you have to network. Magic happens when you network. Exactly. Exactly. So my thing is this. If you have songs out, right, and you got a good amount or you got a project out, that's great. Now, if you're one of these people who don't have a song out or you just got one song out, you need to get the rest of the songs out, okay, and at least get a good amount out. That way you have a body of work and you have diversity for people to listen. So that's one thing. And then once you got something out, a product, then go out there and network. Because, like I said, I just dropped the album this month, earlier this month, mm -hmm. okay? And I'm doing a bunch of marketing behind the scenes trying to push that. So now... I'm having to go in. Now, now that I've got that out, now I'm having to go out, network, you know, talk to people and, you know, get the general interest for it. And, you know, like I said, I'm still filling it out with different people listening to it, passing it to curators, passing it to DJs. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's one of those things. Listen, once you got the music out, network, network, market, market, that should be your mindset. Nice. Okay, does anybody have any questions for Kelvin while he's still on here? Thank yeah. you so much, Kelvin, for doing this. Like, um, no, no problem. No this problem. Is the, these are the type of conversations that we need to have at the panel. This is what we're yeah. looking for. We want we want to hear from the artists. You know, Most a lot definitely. of times, a lot of times the artists just sit back and observe because they don't really know right you know, where to go with it or right. who to try. I feel like some most of the time it's a trusting thing. Yeah, you know, and I I always bring that up because I know for me for the longest time I didn't even realize I had a problem as big that big when it came to trusting. But you yeah. know the way yeah. I was raised, I just didn't know how to trust people, and you know that just yeah. came. <laughs> I just thought that was just how it was supposed to be, you know. Right. And it right. took me it took me a while before I just put myself out here and was just like, you know, you can't be afraid of yep. communicating yep. with somebody or getting to know somebody because you don't know how they can help you. Exactly. Exactly. And and trust that that was my whole childhood. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you. Because I used to, you know, I was that kid that was always afraid to tell the whole truth. Okay. And mm -hmm. you hide things and you keep things to yourself. And especially when it comes to your body or work, whatever your art is, whatever you do as a creator, you want to keep that close. You want to stay guarded, yeah. but you have to learn how to trust people and open yourself to criticism. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, especially when you first start doing that, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt, but you will get past it because you have to, like I said, you can't treat every song or every piece of art like it's a baby right. you can't you have to let it go out and do its own thing it's grown it's out there that's how you have to look at it uh, or else you'll, you'll never get farther because trust me if you're one of those artists that actually ends up getting in a room with some powerful people they're not gonna hold nothing back <laughs> they're not <laughs> they're not gonna hold them back they're gonna hurt your feelings is what they're gonna do because if you think it's hard to get in a room full of your peers and get judgment then you're not going to stand strong in a boardroom if you're trying to work something out. It's just, it's not going to equal out. And we so, have to get over that intimidation, y'all. You do. We got to do it. Like You do. You do. And it took me a long time. It took me a long time to get past it and to get rid of that initial fear, uh, you know, that judgment, you know, what are people going to think? What are they going to say? What if they think it's whack? Oh, man, I should quit. Like, <laughs> You know, but you know what? I, I think I think yeah. it's something that you're you continuously work on because I know it I is. still have my moments right now where I'm just like, I don't know, you know, I don't know if if they're feeling me on this, if they really right. understand me, you know. It's just it's just something. 
natural that happens inside of you that makes you question yourself sometimes and you just have to learn how to overcome that it is it is and for some people it's kind of a flight or uh flight or flight thing you know Mm -hmm. where you 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 kind of you know want to do one or the other but the thing is is that people you this is a quote that has been said many times greatness is on the other side of that wall of fear Okay, greatness is on the other side of that wall of fear. Once you get over that wall of fear, that's when you're gonna shine. That's when you're gonna shine. And people, and we can't compare levels of success because right. we look at some of our peers and we say, "Oh man, they moving like that. They doing that. They working with something." You can't. You can't do that, man. You can't do that. You have to figure out what works for you. Okay, what works? I said, what works for the neighbors may not be what works for me. Okay, right. and that that's just how it's gonna go. And you have to learn how to accept that. And you have to, you know, you may have to step back and reevaluate yourself and say, well, am I taking things too personally? You know, yeah. am I really opening myself up? You know, or am I still being guarded? Right. Because if you can't get past that point right there, you know, of of opening yourself up. And the thing is, is that we got to remember. If you're an artist, right, you're a creator, okay? Mm-hmm. Remember why you started this. You're having fun. So when you get into these events and these meet and greets and these panels, have fun. Be who you are. If you, if, As an artist, if you're a character, be the character. That's all you have to do. Just mm-hmm. be who you are as an artist. And you got to remember that most people ain't judging you, okay? Because when you get in that room, 99% of us are thinking the same thing. <laughs> what is the other person thinking about us? Like, that's how we look. we looking sideways, you know, trying to make sure we're not looking whack. So right. everybody feels the same way. As a creator, everybody's sensitive. Producers, engineers, artists, people who do graphic art, painters, business owners, you name it. And when you're doing this right here, as an entrepreneur, this is the last thing I'm going to say, and then I'm, I'm going to hop off. But as, as an entrepreneur, when you're doing this, you're going to have to remember that you're going to take some L's in the beginning. You're going to take some L's, okay? <laughs> you're going to lose money. You're going to lose sleep. And you might lose friends behind it. And if you lose friends, they were not real friends anyway. So that's just me keeping it as real as I can keep it with you. Being an entrepreneur in those first few years, you're not, you're not going to see a return. It's just not going to happen. You probably won't see a profit or a return two to three years down the road. And I've invested thousands and myself within the past year, okay? And I continue to double down on myself because I believe in what I'm doing. So that's it. Thank you so much. Hey, no Um, problem. No problem. And and I know know it's artists on here who have a voice just like Kelvin. And, you know, you may be afraid to speak out, but now's the time to do that. Like, you you can't keep that in. Yeah, you can't okay. keep you can't keep your art and your talent in. Whatever's on your mind could possibly help somebody else and you not even know it. Right. And right. um you have to know you have to know your stuff is dope. Um that came from DJ Prime Time. He yeah. um he said, you know, you have to know for yourself that your stuff is dope. Because if you don't know, you can't expect for anybody else to know. Right. Right. If you if you don't and, and people can tell. Yeah. <laughs> okay. People can tell, and, and authenticity, especially in hip hop, authenticity is huge. Okay. Right. And so, if you are not believing in yourself, people can see it. People can see it in your content. They can see it in your videos, and they can see it on stage. If you're yeah. not confident, okay. The reason why some people win and some people don't is right in that confidence. Okay. Trust me. I 2019 was the first time I was on stage ever in my life. Okay, summer 2019. Really, that was your first time. That was our first time on stage. Oh wow! And we had to work through some things. I forgot lyrics up there. Okay, (laughs) it's gonna happen. Stuff is gonna go wrong, but you have to learn. And then that—that's when I learned the value of rehearsal. (laughs) Okay, you learn the value of rehearsal and putting in the work to put on a good show. And but you you know know what? Go ahead. Even if even if you mess up. The audience don't necessarily know that you messed up, especially yeah. when it comes to your right. lyrics, because it's like they don't know what you wrote. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and you flip it on them. 
You can flip yep. it on them. So <laughs> it's just it's just one of those things. But you have to roll with the punches because as long as you're confident in yourself, people are gonna believe that. That's how you get people to believe in you is when you believe in yourself first. Okay, you can't be up there all shy with your head down, right. trying to hide behind the <laughs> mic, you know, doing your thing. No, you gotta be up there, stand strong, put your chest out, you know, know you the shit. Okay, you know, that's what I do when I get on stage. I'm the shit. I'm that motherfucker. <laughs> All right, ain't nobody messing with me. Like that that's how like I keep that same energy when I'm on the mic. Okay. When when I record these songs, that same energy. Ain't nobody messing with me. Okay. So I have to keep that same energy when I hop on stage. Ain't nobody messing with me. Ain't nobody out rapping me. Okay. Now <laughs> people got their own opinions. All right. Somebody might be better than somebody else's opinion, but I know I'm dope. <laughs> nice. Chill City, I see you with the lyrics. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I see it. <laughs> Hell yeah, bro. Most definitely. Yep. But Kevin, I thank you so much. Guys, if anybody else has something to say, please get on here with me and say it. You know, I'm trying to get everybody ready um, for this panel. I want you guys to show up. I want you guys to be a part. There's going to be a lot of people there that you can network with, that they can help you you know, understand things that you probably don't understand. And I, it's just going to be a dope experience. And I want you guys to feel comfortable. Most definitely. I appreciate y'all having me. All right. See you. Thank you. Yes, guys, that was very inspiring. I think that's something that we all needed to hear when it comes to artistry. Okay, DJ C, I'm about to add you now. Let's hear what he has to say. Hey. What up, what up, CC the poet? What's up? Yo, I'm, I'm, I'm just learning, man, I'm learning. You learning? Yeah, I'm learning, man. So Yo. How, you feel, how you feeling about the conversation so far? Um. I got a lot to learn, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. you know, like Kelvin said, he's 33. I'm like, I'm 44, and I've been DJing for 20 years. You know what I'm saying? I've seen mm -hmm. cats get deals. You know what I'm saying? I've seen a lot happen out of Huntsville. But I want to say this. is you know, every few years you have a wave. You know what I'm saying? When, right. I, when I really, the first wave was really crazy. That was early 2000s. Um, cats was getting signed out of Huntsville. You know what I'm saying? I was working mm -hmm. with... Pleasure House then and Jackie Chain. Then the next wave was Kind Society. And it was a huge movement there. I remember Kind Society. Yeah. yeah. Kind Society brought me out of retirement. I'm not even going to lie to you. Like, oh, wow. I was like, yo, this is dope. But I feel like now I'm, I'm looking at a third wave. Um, but, you know, the thing that you're trying to do, Cece, with bridging this gap, because now, you know, the first wave, I was in my 20s. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now I'm in my 40s, so I need that help to understand certain things. Um, but I do want to say just something real quick, which is I heard my man say earlier, like, he's like, I ain't reaching out no more than three times. I'm like, look, bro, <laughs> if you really want something, you know what I'm saying? And that comes from my networking background. Like, bro, don't, don't, don't hesitate to just, hey, man, every 30, 60 days, just send another email. You know what I'm saying? I got, I get... I probably get hundreds of emails, you know what I'm saying, over mm -hmm. a 30 to 45 to 60 day span. Mm -hmm. I'm only going to mess with the people that I know. You know what I'm right. saying? So I take my time out. I try to go to open mics and stuff like that. Because as a DJ, part of what I want to do is I want to play what's hot. I want to play the, the up and coming joint. I want to play the next joint. But if I don't know you, you know what I'm saying? Like, Ain't a whole lot I can do. I get emails. I remember I, I had a guy back. He sent me some music. I listened to it. And it was literally like just the music. He didn't say hi. He didn't say nothing. So oh, I what? emailed him back. And I said, bro, like, your music is actually all right. But I don't know you. I don't know your story. You ain't say hi. You ain't say I'm from here. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. He hit me back. You know what I'm saying? So I understand that that's why I think we need this panel. But I also want the artist that's on here to understand, hey, Gabby, you shouldn't be on here. You should be in bed. DJ, um, your boy, boy, I see you. What's up? What's up, man? That's <laughs> what you on here, man. But I just want people to understand that 
there are DJs that are pulling for you. You just haven't found them yet. Yeah. Like you said, the event that we witnessed on Saturday night with DJ Your Boy Boy, like, I can't tell you how phenomenal that was. Like, I can't, like, I think when, when we really get how phenomenal that was, you're going to look back and go, damn, that shit was really dope. Because what you yeah. got to understand is as you move to Nashville and Chattanooga and Jackson, and you're trying to move your product, you're going to understand it like, yo, everybody don't do it like how we do it in Huntsville. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You can't go to 3208 and see a DJ Illy Ill and buy him a drink and say, and politic with him because he's DJing and he's the music manager at We Up. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Before the pandemic, me and Lloyd G would be at 3208 at the open mic every Wednesday. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just trying to figure out what's hot. All of the glitz and glamour, none of that shit matters. You know what I'm saying? We just trying to figure out Who's really trying to get it in? Who's trying to work? You know what I'm saying? My man yeah. and the neighbors, um, Pro Fay and all these guys. The crazy thing is, even if I don't even have any direct contact, they're on my radar because I see them working. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I see it. And I know if I if I did reach out, if I was doing a mixtape or something, oh, they're gonna respond. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. there is a um, there's a lot of knowledge that needs to be imparted because. You know, again, there's a lot of DJs that really do. We come from a background where we were working with solely our Huntsville artists. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. we were literally building from the ground up with the Jackie Chains and the Pone Nations and the slow motion sounds. And literally, as they were doing their thing, the DJ culture was rising, too. And those DJs are still here. You know what I'm saying? We're just a little bit older now. That's <laughs> all. And we're trying to figure out this whole Internet thing and how this social media works, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But at the end of the day, I'm like, look, man, there's opportunities out there. I mentioned my man, Jay Rilla. He has an open mic. Um, 3208 just got back to doing their open mic. Look, you just got to take a chance and you got to go. Every time that I've always looked at an event and been like, man, I don't want to go. I ain't messing with it. And I got up and went. I promise you something crazy time. happened. Yeah, like I met Bun B or I politic with Little John and like it was I'm telling you, it was crazy stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yo, I see my man Travis in the spot, you know what I'm saying? Um, Kelvin said, Yeah, Jackie Chain was nice. But the crazy thing is, is like during that era of Jackie Chain and Slow Motion and Lapone and Alabama Villains and a bunch of other cats, Dirty from Montgomery, the Ron Wright record pool, which is why we're talking about putting this stuff together is we had a direct link from Huntsville all the way down to Mobile. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, it's a combination of people here from everywhere. From every, and I'm from New York. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I've been here for a minute, but, you know, I always say the blessing for me was because I'm a DJ, I mess with everybody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was Pleasure House's DJ, but I mess with, I mess with everybody. And we had a nice synergy going. I saw it with with Con Society, because it Con Society literally made me come out the house because I was chilling. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, nah, this this my vibe. And I met a whole new new era of artists. You know what I'm saying? From yeah. Messiah to uh, I mean, just a bunch of them that weren't even, you know what I'm saying, moving 10 years before that. Mm -hmm. And now I believe, CC, with what you're doing, we're hitting that 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 third wave. But this time I'm like, all right, we got the OGs that's been through it, you know what I'm saying? Like you said, we got Kelvin, you know what I'm saying? He's he's working. He's right yeah. there in the middle. And then we got the younger cats, you know, like my pretty boy Floyd's, um, um, you know, JDM Burke, you know, his brother, uh, you know, all these young cats. And it's like, yo, they really pumping some good music. So let's take that time, like you said, to put something together, sit down, really talk about how we're moving as a city. Because I'm telling y'all, I've seen Huntsville like do things that Birmingham wasn't doing, do things that, that Mobile wasn't doing. Do th these cats are coming up here to perform. You know what I'm saying? R.I.P., you know what I'm saying? God bless the dead. But the last Mr. Big used to come up here all the time and be like, yo, like, we were doing a Freestyle Sunday event, straight hip-hop, right here in Huntsville. I heard somebody, I saw somebody posted earlier, oh, we ratchet, we don't do hip-hop. I'm like, mm -hmm. that's a lie. You know what I'm saying? Huntsville is the ultimate melting pot for everything because you got people from everywhere you know what i'm saying so yo, i'm just saying i'm here i got a bunch of djs that's willing to work 
Um, you know DJ, your boy, boy, prime mm -hmm. time, DJ Blue, Queen. Like uh, it's it's a it's a boatload of DJs. We just gotta, mm -hmm. like you say, and what you're trying to do is just connect those bridges. So I just want to say I'm here. I support y'all. You know what I'm saying? Yo, let's get it popping, y'all. It's 2021, man. We ain't got time to wait. I know we got dope artists. I'm hearing it. R&B, <laughs> hip hop, neo soul, funk, all of that. You know what I'm saying? You need a good producer. You need a studio. You need whatever. Holla at me. I'm telling you, we have platinum Grammy winning producers right here in the city. Right here. Like, I don't know what, I don't, like, if you don't know them. We just got to get in the same room. We just got to get in the same room. Let's see. Room. Agreed, agreed. And you know, like me being from Mobile, like I've been here since what? Since sex. What up? 20, 2013. I've been here since 2013. And you know, back home at that time, it wasn't really a music scene like it is now in Mobile. You know, mm. so me just come, me coming here, it opened my eyes to a lot of stuff for me to be creative because I didn't even know how to really be creative when it came to networking with other artists and throwing events and doing stuff like that until I got here, you right. know. And it's a lot of people that's coming here for for school at A&M, UAH, Oakwood, a lot of artists who aren't from here who want to feel welcome just because they're here now, right. you know. And we just, we just got to get everybody in the same room. Right. That's it. I'm with you, Cece. You're on the right path. You're doing the right thing. Um... You know, sometimes unexpectedly, it's not necessarily the person that you would think that would bring us all together. You know what I'm saying? A yeah. person, I think that person is you. You know what I'm saying? You you laid it out. You <laughs> said it. I mean, but it's just a matter of, like we talked about, you're the person that can get these three or four or five people. I can pull these three, three four or five people. He can pull <laughs> these. And next thing you know, we got 15, 20 people in the room. That's a power move. I'm telling you right now. And like I said, even with the event that, that your boy boy did Saturday night, if other cities knew we were doing that, people would drive. I promise you. Yeah, for they'll three come for hours to be in a room like that. Yeah. You understand? I what I'm agree. Saying? Yeah. I know because I used to drive to other cities to do it, but then we were also doing it here as well. Shout out Ron Wright Record Pool. Again, like I can't say enough. That's 10 stacks in the building. Look that dude up, man. Birmingham in the building. He's serious. He's been here. Ten Stacks has come here and performed. Man, come on now. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, it's 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 real. But all we looking for is the people that want to, like we say, we we just looking for the people that want to get it like us. You know what I'm saying? And if you're curious, if you if you're wondering like what you need to do, again, ain't no look me, Lloyd G, we ain't nothing but a DM away. And once you messing with me, you messing with ten other DJs that you don't even know. You know what I'm saying? So we just got to get it together. CC, I think you the one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sound on the hill. Shout out. CC the poet. You know what I mean? Thank you. And oh, you yeah. know what? If you're an artist on here, we just, we need you at this panel. That's the thing. Like, right. as artists, we have to show up. We just got to show up. That's that's the easiest step to getting anything done is just being in the room, showing up, being able to, you know, voice whatever's on your mind. That's where it starts. Mm -hmm. Regardless of what you think people are going to think of you, regardless of if you're intimidated, you can't be intimidated if you're not there. You right. have to be there in the room. Right. I mean, that's, that's the key. You know, like you said earlier, you know, <laughs> artists are sensitive about this shit. But at the end yeah. of the day, you know, we got to get work done. If I can put 10 DJs in a room and you can play your music for 10 DJs and get it critiqued by 10 DJs, Believe me, that's priceless. Right. People, I've seen people pay good money for that for those critiques in real time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we have the power to do it in Huntsville. It's coming. Um, my man just said Rocket City is on its way up. Bro, we've been up. We've been doing <laughs> stuff that other folks ain't doing. You know what I'm saying? People always say, why we ain't had an artist, you know, that's, that's really want to grant? Oh, it's coming. You know what I'm saying? And don't get it twisted. We, we've had artists sign some really nice deals right out of the Tennessee Valley and Huntsville area. You know what I'm saying? We got we got artists that can really move a crowd. You know what I mean? But all I'm saying is don't hesitate. If you see an open mic, go. Hit up Jay Rilla. Hit up 3208. These aren't even my events. I'm just telling you where the open mics are right now. And there's been, there's been many open mics. You know what I'm saying? But I pull up. 
Why would I pull up, 44 years old, why would I pull up to an open mic? Why? As a DJ, I got to know what's popping in my city. I don't like when people say, yo, so-and-so is hot. And I go, yo, who is that? I don't yeah. like that. You know what I'm saying? I got to know. You know what I mean? So I haven't made it to Jay Willis Joint, but I bought a T-shirt and I plan to be there this Sunday. So y'all pull up, And you know what? Man. I actually have been talking to Jay Rilla um, because he's been wanting me to pull up and he told me like he does the open mics every Sunday. So that's a that's an open mic opportunity for all of you guys who want to perform. He does that every Sunday and every I can Sunday. get that information and put it on the page for you guys as well. You know how hard it is to do an open mic every Sunday? And oh, I, see I know. My girl, I see my girl Amari pulled up in the joint. What up, Amari? Hey, Amari. You know what I'm saying? What's she up, out there in the A. We gonna, matter of fact, Mari, we're going to see you in a minute. You know what I'm saying? We'll be out there. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, like, this stuff ain't easy. You know what I'm saying? And I think about all the other people I know that did open mics. Like, look, take advantage of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Tarzo. You know what I'm saying? Tough new artists. And matter of fact, my man Travis just saying, though, is saying Tarzo. I believe Tarzo's been to Jay Willis open mic. That's the only way we can get to know y'all. These are our networking events. And you know what? Take advantage of the opportunity that I have as well. Like, for artists, if you have music, just send it to me. Like, I do that for free. I promote music for free because I feel like if I'm scrolling and I see something and I can like it and acknowledge it like that, I might as well share it, do a, put it on a playlist, you know, for y'all to listen to, for everybody to listen to. Wow. So, you know, we can listen to each other. We can get to know each other as artists. So if you have content that you want to, you know, send in, just send it. And whenever I see it, I'll repost it. Yo, that's it. So I want to see y'all at open mics. You know what I'm saying? When we get yep. the channel popping, when we get the record pools popping. Yeah. Over the next month, month and a half. You know what I'm saying? I want to see y'all there. Well, look, we've had yeah. Mixed Madness. Whether y'all say y'all know about it or not. We've yeah. been doing my man DJ, your boy, boy, every first of the month. You know what I'm saying? Every, every first, first Monday, Monday, right? It's been going on where he's putting... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight DJs in a room. And I'm talking about no charge, no fee. You could have walked in that spot and literally handed your music or whatever you got, your product to three, four, five different DJs. And I'm talking about DJs on We Up, DJs in the club, DJs online, all of that. You know what I'm saying? So shout out your boy, boy. I'm telling you, man, movers and shakers, man, we right here. We're not as far away, I think, sometimes as people think. You know what I'm saying? Um, we right here. This is this is this is the city that we love, man. We want to see it succeed. You know what I'm saying? Most definitely. I see you, your boy, boy. I'm out of here, Cece. No, I'm not out of here, but I'm gonna get off. Here <laughs> somebody else want to get on. But look, I'm glad you did this call. It's snowing out. We ain't got nothing to do but network and talk to right. each other. You know what I'm saying? Right. Y'all hit me up. Y'all see me on Instagram. DM me. Hit me up. I shoot you my email. I need your music. I do Rocket City Radio. Once a week, usually on Friday at 7. I think I'm going to do it either tonight or tomorrow because I'm going to be in Atlanta, it look like. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, but, yo, this is what we do, man. Hit your boy boy up. The mixtape is John Blaze. Please Fire. listen to the mixtape. When he start charging y'all for slots on that mixtape, just know <laughs> it's my fault because I told him that because the joint is that hot. Peace, CC. Peace. Yeah, please listen to the mixtape, y'all. It's the link is in my bio is organic chemistry i'm on there it's a lot of other dope artists on there and you know we just got to support each other when it comes to just listening and acknowledging i'm really glad i did this live today if anybody else wants to get on here and talk if you have something to say you can just go ahead and do that i'm here we snowed in i don't have nothing to do for the moment and I'm just really excited about, you know, artists coming together and, you know, learning about each other. Everybody's human. Everybody, you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be intimidated by someone who is just trying to help, you know? Chill City, I need you at the panel. What's on your mind, Chill City? And I thank all of y'all for being on here tonight. And even if you're not saying anything, just, you know, just listening. 
and being a part of the movement because that's all sound on the hill sound everywhere is it's a movement we just highlighting such highlighting success and everything but yeah i'll go over the topics again just so you guys can know um the panel topics that we have so far are communication with the people that are in your reach you have to learn how to communicate with people you can't you can't be an artist if you don't know how to communicate that's like the top that's the number one key intimidation we have to get over intimidation when it comes to being an artist you can't be scared you know, things aren't going to be easy. Things gonna, are going to be hard sometimes, but, you know, you have to get through that. Listening and learning, everyone is kicking good knowledge. Most definitely. Um, competition. Competition shouldn't even be a thing. You know, you're going to always have somebody who, who's doing what you do. They might not do it like you do, but, you know, competition just comes with the industry. Networking. Networking is important. Networking is the most important thing because if you're not networking with people, then how are people going to know you? Unity, we have to come together when it comes to the Black community, when it comes to the Black art community. We have to come together. Out of city and state acceptance. We have to learn how to accept these people, guys. Accept the people who are around us, no matter where they're from, you know, I understand that where we're from kind of makes us sometimes, but, you know, with life, we don't know where we're going to end up. We don't know. And we shouldn't hold that against people either. Reputation. Reputation is the most important thing when it comes to being an artist, because if you're not promoting yourself, then nobody's going to be able to promote you or feel comfortable promoting you if they don't see you promoting yourself. The key question to being an artist is what do you want? What do you want as an artist for yourself? What do you want? If you don't know the answer to that question, I need you guys to write that down tonight and try to and work on that until you know the answer. What do you want as an artist? What do you want to get out of it? Who's helping you out? Do you have a mentor? Do you need a mentor? Do you need somebody to talk to? Because if you do, then you need to reach out reach out to people that you think can help you. Even if they say no, if they say no, then that's fine. Just move on to the next person. You have to know that your own stuff is dope because if you don't know, nobody else can know, period. And yep, that's all that I have. Um, does anybody else have any questions, comments before I end the live? We're shooting for April 11th for the panel, guys. So if you're an artist, make sure that you come out for that. Um, let's bridge this gap between the old generation and new generation because there's no need for us to be separated. It's so much wisdom that both generations have. Um, and we can teach each other. We can learn from each other. Thank you, Tari. I appreciate you too. But yeah, definitely come out April 11th. Definitely make sure that your face is in that building. Even if you don't say anything, even if you just come to listen. But I hope you come and say something. <laughs> oh, thank you. No, shout out to you, DJ Boy, because you really put this together for real, for real. Because you made me comfortable in a room um, with people that I really didn't know that I was empire so empire empowered by until I actually got in the room. Make sure you guys listen to Organic Chemistry. I'm on there. I'm doing the interludes four times. The link is in Sound on the Hills bio. It's in my bio. It's in DJ Your Boy Boy's bio. And yep. So I'm just going to go ahead and end this live. I'm going to save it. So if you missed it, be sure to go and look. Wait, hold on. Where's the panel going to be? Um, we're gonna we're gonna get we're gonna make a flyer, 
and we're going to uh, make sure that we promote the location and things. Um, we have enough time to promote it, so just be be looking out for the flyer. And we definitely have some opportunities for you artists as well. Um, we, we, we're definitely going to make it a networking opportunity for everyone. Okay, yeah, but I'm going to end this live. If you missed it, make sure you watch it over from the beginning. Um, tell your friends to watch it. If they're artists, make sure they know about the panel that's coming up. Let's make this a big successful event. You guys be safe out. Be safe if you gotta go outside. It's snowing. You know, Alabama not used to that for real, for real. So please be safe. And you know, just have a good rest of your night. Peace. <laughs>